In this video, we're going to cover connecting Power BI to a RDS in AWS. So first off, we need to navigate to the AD AWS console and verify that we actually have a DB instance running and that it is indeed a MySQL instance. What we're after after we validated that it is in fact a functioning database is the endpoint. That can be done here or here. We also want to confirm that the default port is used or if we need to modify the port that is used that we make note of that as well. So I'm going to copy this endpoint and generally use uh, MySQL Workbench to validate that I can actually connect with the credentials provided to the RDS. So we're just going to run a simple query here on the customer table and I can see that it is in fact uh, I am able to connect to the RDS Power BI and that I do uh, have permissions to run a SQL statement and that it is actually returning data. So now we can start into the Power BI component. First we can access data in the RDS using the built-in MySQL database connection that is provided with Power BI. So first it's going to ask me for my server. I'm going to paste in my endpoint and I need to give it a database name. Use Power BI. The next component is going to challenge me for credentials to the database. We're going to choose database credentials here and we're going to use the credentials created for this user on the RDS. I'm going to click connect. Now Power BI will be able to connect to the cloud, connect to the RDS, and actually show us a list of tables provided in that Power BI database. And as you can see here, I can still see that one table customer that I was showing you before, and we can actually load our data. Power BI will then make the connection to the RDS, create a data model, bring the data, the model, uh, all the data down into the model, and then we can start developing and using Power BI as normal. You can see here, first name, last name, email, etc. We also have another option if we want to connect to an RDS in the cloud. We can use an ODBC driver. So I can create a new DSN. I click add here, new ODBC uh, MySQL, give it a name, Power BI. I'm going to use my server name. I could also change the port if the RDS had changed its uh, default port. Give it the username. Test my connection. Successful. Hit OK. Hit OK. Now I can come in through Power BI and instead of choosing the MySQL component, come to the bottom and we'll actually choose ODBC. Will ask me what ODBC I want to use. This would be the newly created Power BI. Click OK. Again, we'll need to give it our database credentials. So I'll need to retype that in. And then you'll see that I have now available to me all the databases that are in that RDS, most of which are system databases, and then the one database that we're after here with the customer. Again, I can preview the data as well. So we went through, first off, validating that we have an RDS created in AWS. We used, in this example, MySQL. Next, that we actually did have credentials to the RDS that allowed us to at least do selects on the RDS. We got our endpoint that was provided to us from AWS um, to specifically guide us into that, our, uh, that one instance of MySQL. And then by connecting through the MySQL workbench and through Power BI, we also validated that we had proper access to the RDS. From Power BI, we created a new connection using the embedded MySQL database component, and we also created a new ODBC driver uh, listing for a new DSN that we then use through Power BI to connect to the AWS RDS MySQL version. If we have some issues, more than likely they are going to fall into one of these categories. Is first off, um, is there a security group set up in AWS that is somehow blocking you or your IP from accessing the RDS? Uh, is there a NACL or network ACL that is uh, causing you, again, to be blocking a port or a specific uh, subnet or whatnot from your local uh, computer that you're trying to connect to? Maybe blocking you and that will cause you not to be able to connect to the RDS. 
And finally, maybe you just don't have the proper credentials. The last one that we do see at times is that the firewall on your end may be blocking your communication with the RDS in the cloud. So thanks for your time. We'll see you soon.